Welcome friends to another lecture on Dr. Harit's laboratory medicine. In this lecture, I'll be talking about transaminase estimation. I'll be talking about how AST and ALT are estimated. This is a part of the liver function test. Now, what is AST and ALT? AST and ALT are enzymes which belong to the group called transaminase. The full form of AST is aspartate transaminase. And the full form of ALT is alanine amino trans uh, alanine transaminase. AST used to be previously called SGOT, that is serum glutamate oxaloacetate transaminase, and ALT used to be called SGPT, serum glutamate pyruvate transaminase. These are very old names, and they should not be used nowadays. We should talk about AST and ALT. Important thing to note in these names are oxaloacetate, pyruvate, aspartate, and alanine. Okay, now what is a transamination reaction? A transamination reaction is a reaction between an amino acid and something called a keto acid. COOH group is an acid. C double bond O is a keto. So this is called a keto acid. Similar way, there is a COOH. It's an acid group and an NH2. So this is an amino acid. So when an amino acid and a keto acid react, the double bond shifts and the amino group shifts. So this gets a double bond, loses the amino group, and forms a keto acid. This keto acid gets an amino group and becomes an amino acid. When we react aspartate with alpha ketoglutarate, we get oxaloacetate. That is why this enzyme is also called as SGOT. Aspartate is being converted to oxalate. Now, when we say AST, we are talking about aspartate transaminase where the reaction is occurring with aspartate. This reaction requires a coenzyme which is also known as P53. Uh, what is the full form of P5P? You can check this up in Google and write the answer in the comments. The, the next reaction is the reaction of ALT. ALT as it stands for alanine transaminase requires alanine the keto acid used is alpha ketoglutarate. This is the same as the one used in the previous reaction. When alanine reacts with alpha ketoglutarate, it forms pyruvic acid and glutamic acid. So the original name of this enzyme was SGPT, where we said serum glutamate pyruvate transaminase. And now we are talking about ALT, which uses alanine transaminase. This also requires a cofactor, a coenzyme P5P. Now, if the test is done in this step, it is an endpoint chemistry, and to form adequate amount of pyruvate to detect it takes a very long time. However, if we connect this reaction to an other reaction, that is, if we convert the pyruvate form to lactate using an enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. This will use NADH to form NAD and convert pyruvate to lactate. This reaction occurs very fast and the rate of NADH is consumed at a very fast rate and this reaction can be estimated as a kinetic test. By, me, by adding the second enzyme, we are converting an endpoint reaction into a kinetic reaction. A kinetic test can be done between 3 to 5 minutes. So a reaction which would have taken 1 hour will now get finished in 3 to 5 minutes. That is why the estimation of transaminase is done as a two-step reaction. Now if you look for AST, aspartate reacts with the enzyme to form oxaloacetate. This oxaloacetate form can be treated with an enzyme malate dehydrogenase. For ALT, we used lactate dehydrogenase. For aspartate, we are using malate dehydrogenase. Malate dehydrogenase converts oxaloacetate to malate using NADH to NAD. NADH has absorbance at 340 nanometers, but NAD does not. 
as the reaction from oxaloacetate to malate occurs nadh gets consumed and the optical denser and the absorbance starts at 340 nanometers starts to fall down and we can use this as a kinetic test to estimate the levels of ast in the blood the final reaction of alt i would request you all to complete the reaction and send me a photograph of the complete reaction to my email id just to test yourself now the final reaction for ast is this what are the uh, what are we testing we are testing ast where is the ast coming from the ast is coming from the serum so ast is being provided by the serum all the other chemicals should be provided in the reagent we are using to test we use a single reagent for this test we take the reagent and add the serum so what should the reagents consist the reagent any biochemistry reaction requires to have a buffer so there will be a buffer what are the raw products required for this enzyme activity this enzyme needs to act on aspartate and alpha ketoglutarate so these two things will be present in the reagent once these two reagent things are present in the reagent with the buffer the the enzyme will act and produce oxaloacetate we require p5p this p5p should also be there in the reagent so what are all we, uh, as of now what all have we got in the reagent we've got p5p we've got alpha ketoglutarate we have aspartate and we have the buffer with all these in the reagent the uh, the reaction will occur and lot of oxaloacetate will be formed the oxaloacetate form needs to act with malate dehydrogenase so our reagent should also have malate dehydrogenase oxaloacetate will be produced by ast and for malate dehydrogenase to work we need to have lot of nadh so our final reagent will consist of aspartate alpha ketoglutarate p5p malate dehydrogenase and nadh you can similarly work out what will be required for doing alt now i said that the test is done at 340 nanometers and nadh has got absorbance at 340 nanometers but as it becomes nad the absorbance falls so when you look at the graph of the result for every kinetic test we can look at the graph when we look at the graph the graph is going to be a decreasing graph if the graph is a straight line then our result was our test was proper and whatever result we get we can report if this graph is not straight if this graph finishes up early or becomes irregular then we should not report most of the biochemistry tests the end point chemistries we normally test a standard and compare the absorbance with that of the standard because this is a kinetic test we do not use a standard we use a factor whatever change in absorbance we get we multiply it by the factor and give the final result what is a end point chemistry what is a kinetic chemistry what is a factor all these are covered in my videos which is present in the channel you can have a look at them the points that you should keep in mind while doing a kinetic test is we should be very clear as to what is the wavelength in which we are doing the test this will be 340 nanometers there is something called a lag time there is something called a time interval lag time should be fixed as per the kit's uh, manufacturer's instruction time interval is the number of uh, the time uh, gap between which we should take su uh, sub uh, next readings number of readings is how many readings we are going to take at what time interval these will be provided by the kit and other important thing that we should note is that at what temperature we are doing we are trying to estimate an enzyme in the serum enzymes are very sensitive to temperature the kit tells us at what temperature we should do the test in case the temperatures are usually at 30 degree centigrade or 37 degree centigrade we should be clear as to what is the temperature we have set inside 
and at 30 degrees the normal values are different at 37 degrees the normal values are different so we should know what is the temperature we are setting the instrument at and we should write the normal levels in relation to that temperature usually everywhere across the world they do the test at 37 degrees centigrade now the normal range of this enzymes at 37 degrees centigrade is 15 to 45 international units per liter AST or SGOT is present in the liver cells in the liver cells it is present in the cytoplasm and the mitochondria AST is also present in the muscle cells and the RBCs ALT is present only in the cytoplasm of liver cells or the hepatocytes it is not present in any other tissue ALT is usually considered a better marker of liver disease because this is not involved in any other tissues of the body. AST and ALT are very good markers for liver disease but AST can be affected by other tissues also and we damage to other tissues also and we should keep that in mind. Now the conditions where both AST and ALT are raised liver disease most common cause viral hepatitis hepatitis A, hepatitis B, C, D, all the hepatitis AST and ALT levels are raised. Drug induced liver disease. If we have a drug induced liver disease like anti tuberculosis drug or cancer drugs which destroy the liver then these enzymes will increase. These enzyme levels will rise high even when the bilirubin is normal indicating that this is early liver disease. So AST and ALT estimation is very important. Any liver injury following surgery etc will also cause a raise. If there is shock or fall in blood pressure so that the blood supply to the liver gets obstructed, reduced, then AST ALT levels will increase. In obstructive jaundice, the major enzyme that rises is alkaline phosphatase but we will find a moderate increase in AST and ALT levels. In chronic liver disease, the enzymes both AST and ALT increase but the level of increase is not related or does not uh, match that of bilirubin. You could have a person with a chronic liver disease having a bilirubin of 20 mg per deciliter and AST and ALT enzymes only to the tune of 150 to 200 international units per liter. In acute liver disease these values may reach thousands. But in chronic liver disease, you may get values just of the, uh, just in the hundreds and two hundreds. Conditions where AST level become more than ALT. Normal, normally, ALT is more than AST and ALT is considered a better marker for liver damage than AST. However, in case the liver injury is very early and the patient has, to, has come to us before five days, you can find AST levels more than ALT but after four to five days you'll find that the ALT level becomes more than AST. Alcohol can damage the liver and alcohol not only damages the liver cells but also in the liver cells it damages the mitochondria. AST and ALT will increase from the cytoplasm but since AST is present in the mitochondria also even this adds up to the total AST and in alcohol induced liver disease you will find AST more than ALT. Hemolytic anemias where the RBCs get damaged I said that AST is present in the RBCs also so when hemolytic anemia is occurring when RBCs are getting damaged then the AST levels will be high but since there is no problem in the liver the ALT levels will be normal. Similarly, muscles have got AST and they don't have ALT. So if there is any muscle damage, you can find an increase in AST and a normal ALT. Low AST and ALT rarely occur. In newborn children, you can see it. In people who are recovering from a liver disease, their AST ALT levels are very high and gradually they start decreasing and come back to normal levels. There is a condition called fulminant hepatic failure where there is total destruction of the liver cells. When there are no living liver cells present, 
the levels of AST and ALT will be very low to the tune of 5 or 2 international units per liter but at this stage the patient will be very critical and almost dying. Thank you very much for listening to my lecture. You can contact me at my email ID. My YouTube channel is Arud Harit. I also have started a new channel QS and Biochemistry for English videos. I have started a website in which all my videos are properly been labeled that you can search and see. Thank you.